All right, everyone, let's continue on the Game gear Athon with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Game Gear, my least favorite one in the Game Gear lineup. I'll go into why as we go. And as we saw, that little intro cutscene basically tells us the game's plot. Tails got kidnapped by Eggman. And if I recall, the manual even would state that he sent a letter to Sonic basically saying, Get me the seven chaos emeralds or else things are gonna go bad for him. Well, not seven. Uh, this actually came out before Sonic 2 and the Genesis, so because of that, there's only six chaos emeralds still. And there's no spin dash either. Which is kind of odd that in Tails' debut appearance, he'd get kidnapped. Hmm. Though what's really odd is that you're going to be seeing throughout, uh, every zone starts with a little title card in it, and every single one of those Tails is actually in it. I guess maybe he was intended to be a playable character at some point? I don't know. Either way, welcome to the first Ground Underground zone, which is a bit of an odd choice for our first stage, because most Sonic games start with a Green hill esque area. This one sends us right into basically uh, what would later become a Lava Reef kind of area. And you just saw right through one of the biggest problems with the Game Gear version, Screen Crunch. Like Sonic 1 on the Game Gear, this was on the Master System first, but the screen had a lot, but uh, had a bigger resolution, or at least you had a more see stuff you could see on the screen, I guess that's technically resolution. And because of that, things were pretty fair in terms of coming at you. This time around, because the screen is so crunched in, you can get blindsided so easily, it's ridiculous. That's the main reason this game's going to be very difficult for any first-timers. Either way, right there, we went into the end of act panel, and like Sonic 1 in the Game Gear, that could be a few different things. There's a Dr. Robotnik, which is the one you see most often, which means you get no prize. If you have 10 rings, or at least any multiple of 10, you get 10 rings to your score. There's a 1-up thing, which is a Sonic icon, which you get from finishing the act with exactly 2 lives less than what you started with. And then a tail sign, which you continue, which is awarded for the player if you act, finish an act with, seven, with 77 rings, and the exact same amount of lives as when you started. Now, Chaos Emeralds are still in the game, uh, however, like Sonic 1 in the Game Gear, they're still hidden in the stages. If you want to find the first one, you have to stay on the top here in Underground Zone Act 2, and get the blue Chaos Emerald. Which is actually the thing this game does better than Sonic 1 in the Game Gear. They, they, all the Chaos Emeralds actually had their own colors. It's not like Sonic 1 in Game Gear where they were all blue for some reason. Honestly, I, I've been skimming over it, but Underground Zone's actually not that bad of an area. The only real source of difficulty is coming up here at the boss, Act 3. Like Sonic 1 in the Game Gear, this is this game follows a three-act per zone structure. However, like Sonic 1 in the Game Gear, the, the third act is usually shorter, almost always devoid of enemies. It's usually just you and the boss you have to get to the end of it. However, like Sonic 1 in the Game Gear, you get no rings, so this can be dangerous. Alright, let's go after this boss. Whee! Oh... Why would you save me from a lava pit, Eggman? I guess you do kind of need the Chaos Emeralds, though, don't you? Uh. And time for the point that a lot of players probably couldn't get past back in the first playthrough, the first boss in Antlion. The way this boss works is that you actually can't damage it itself. You have to let these little cannonballs drop down and avoid them so that you can land on the Antlion and do damage to it, to it. The speeds and heights of the cannonballs are randomized, and this is actually really tricky on a Game Gear. On the Master System, you can see these things coming for a bit longer. You can actually... I don't think their pads are randomized either. So, you actually, on the Master System, have a lot more time to avoid them. However, when the thing starts moving fast, make sure to jump over Eggman, because otherwise he'll kill you. And then you can end off the zone. And at the end of every zone, you hit one of these little roboticizer things to free the animals. Though that is one of the stranger roboticizer designs, mind you. Robotnik does like putting his face on everything for some narcissistic reason, so... I don't know. And now time for Sky High Zone, which just reminds me of that Disney movie that I was supposed to get a TV series that I really would have liked to watch. Sky High Zone, first off, visually reminds me a lot of Hilltop Zone from Sonic 2. Is actually, in my eyes, a bit of an easier stage than Underground Zone because there's a lot less in your way. Plus, there's a way you can skip over the stages in a lot of cases, too, because as you may have noticed in the title card, there was a little glider that Sonic had. You can find that in, I want to say, at least two out of the three stages here. I forget if there's one in Act 3. And they're going to be your main way of going over them. We're coming up across one right now to this invincibility box, actually. The way you want to go about maneuvering these things right here is by rhythmatically tapping the left button, similarly to the cape from Mario. However, as you can see, the timing can be a bit picky, and if you don't get it right, 
it, you'll notice because you're dropping. However, when you start getting right, you'll know because you'll start flying forward pretty quickly. This is actually really key to skipping over most of the levels, so I recommend getting used to it. Also, speaking of the invincibility power-ups, something that's actually missing from Sonic 2 on Game Gear that's in Sonic 1 on Game Gear is shields. In Sonic 1 on Game Gear, you may have had zero rings for boss fights, but more often than not, you can bring a shield in from a previous level to protect yourself. In this game, they don't exist, so it really is one hit, one kill. <laughs> not a fan. It doesn't help that this game actually has some pretty tough bosses compared to Sonic 1 on Game Gear, because, you know, they actually try to attack me. Either way, Sky High Act 2 is where the Chaos Emerald is, because uh, emeralds are never in Act 3. And this is, can actually be one of the more dickish emeralds to get. Once you're about maybe three-fourths of the way through the level, you'll find a very specific spring you can jump on that'll lead you to the thing. And at that point, I'm actually already past it, you need to jump on it, and then jump on a cloud to the right of it. This is really annoying, because first off, you can't tell what clouds you can walk on. They need to gain some speed, jump on that, and then you need to head right. It takes me, I think, maybe one or two tries to get it. You need to go all the way up there and grab it. It's on the highest part of the screen. That is not only the Chaos Emerald I missed the most in my earlier playthroughs, but it's also probably the most annoying to get in terms of placement, because the others are fairly simple. Once you get that, though, Sky High Act 2 really ends quickly, because I think the stages are actually a bit shorter in Sonic 2 on the Game Gear. Mind you, that could also be because I think Sonic moves slightly faster. In fact, he controls a lot better than he did in Sonic 1 on Game Gear. I can say that for a fact. At least in my opinion. And time for Sky High Zone Act 3, which is actually one of the easier boss stages in the game. Uh, more often than not, the boss stages are a bit longer than they were in Sonic 1 on Game Gear. But in some cases, they're also a lot easier, because as you can see, I got to that no issue. This boss is a bit tricky. First off, you have to take care of the little robotic baby birds. They come in two waves of four. Uh, I think you can basically not get killed as long as you're jumping. Then we need to destroy them and the eggs that are constantly hatching them. This part's really easy, just don't overestimate your speed, or underestimate it even, because then you can get killed easily. Then the real boss comes out, the Mother Goose! This boss is really easy because you can get it into a lock where it can't attack as long as you are constantly attacking it. The fireball it does fire though does home in on you, so watch out for that. And with that, we're done with screen, uh, uh, Sky High Zone. Almost had another zone there. Sky High Zone is actually a bit easier than Underground in my eyes, and the boss is even easier for that matter. So really, it, it shouldn't give you much trouble. In fact, I think this game is actually one that has uh, very inconsistent difficulty, somewhat similar to Sonic 1 on Game Gear, actually, in that they really dramatically rise and lower. Either way, welcome to Aqua Lake Zone, which is actually probably my favorite zone in the game because the gimmick with this stage is, as you just say, you saw, there's water in it. As long as you're in a ball, you'll bounce on top of it. Not only leading to some pretty good speed, but also just to skipping most of the level. Though, if I recall, one difference in this, the, from the Master System version, is that the water here is actually a darker blue than a green that it was in the, in the Master System version. Now, one thing I'm not sure about in the Game Gear titles, because I rarely ever see them, if ever, until maybe the next game, is Speed Shoes. I know for a fact that in this game there was a Speed Shoes somewhere, but I think it was replaced by a Ring Box in this version, which is weird. Actually, another random Master System uh, difference coming up in this next level is... The, the start of this next level is actually really weird because the water will rise. That doesn't happen in the Master System version, and one thing I learned when trying to do some practice playthroughs is that when the water is rising, for some reason, you can't pause the game. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Also, you can fall through certain parts of the floor. That's intentional, that's not a bug. Either way, as you can obviously tell, Aqua Lake is this game's water level, and like Sonic 1 on Game Gear, you don't get the drowning music when you start drowning. However, this time around, there's another way to get air besides normal bubbles. These bubbles you can move around in. The bubbles are actually a bit weird in terms of control. They move up automatically, yeah, but you can speed up or slow down their ascent by holding up or down respectively. The moment you touch a wall or an enemy, though, it pops, and you're gonna need these things in order to progress to the level, so get used to controlling them. However, unlike some games where maybe if you had a bubble like this, like uh, Mega Man 8, for instance, actually, if you get hit, the bubble will pop, yes, but you'll also take damage. It's not one of those things where you get a free hit. 
Thankfully, though, whenever you're in one of these bubbles, it counts as you having air, so you don't need to worry about drowning as much. Though that's actually one thing this game has is a semi-consistent theme, at least uh, for basically the first half of the game. Uh, it slows down slightly in later levels. Is that every level actually has a unique form of transportation. It was minecarts in the ground, the hang glider in the previous stage, and it's the bubbles here. But you know, that's cool. Also, hi again, crab meat. You're half blue for some reason. I doubt that's actually crab meat because uh, this game, for some reason the Sonic series likes to have unique badniks to every game, even though they're basically the same one. Like uh, Grounder and Burrowbot. But, eh, well, who do I care? No one really cares about the enemy names that aren't named uh, Motobug, Scratcher, or Grounder anyway. At least in my experience. Someone probably does. In fact, they probably have fan fiction of them for all I know because the internet is weird, but I love it. By the way, I hate these shrimp enemies because they're constantly in my way, at least this one in particular. Uh, the way they work is they actually go, they, they have a set spawn area like that, obviously. And the moment you come within a certain radius of them, they'll, head, they'll start heading towards you for a few seconds. Although eventually, either it's at, when they reach the end of their radius or it's just due to a timing thing, they will stop following you, pause there for a second, and then head back to their original area, which is kind of strange. We're actually coming up on this stage as Emerald. Hold left in this tunnel. Because then you'll get spat out right about... Here. And that allows you to get the Chaos Emerald. The t these tube things we'll actually see again later on, so get used to the way they work now. If you, if you want to go in a certain direction of a fork, hold that direction. And later on, it's going to have some pretty tight timing. I'll tell you that for a fact. And this is the area I like to call the climb. Basically... This is a very large shaft, uh, I walked right into that one, didn't I? That you have to climb the bubble in. There's shrimp and there are spears almost right out of a uh, aquatic ruin zone that you need to avoid, otherwise you're falling all the way back down. And depending on where you are, that fall down is maybe a good 30 seconds uh, wasted. And I don't like that. Hence why I yelled at myself for that. Thankfully though, the spears don't respawn. The fish do, I believe, I think, but the spears do not. So you can, technically speaking, just go all the way to the top, or, uh, well, actually, no, let me restart that sentence. One feasible strategy that admittedly does waste a bit of time is to constantly just go up and hit every single spear so you can have an easier time just holding up. Though, actually, speaking of going fast, there's one weird uh, thing that the TAS uses a lot for this game in that if you're able to hold left and right at the same time, for some reason Sonic has an extreme amount of acceleration heading left, and that allows you to do some weird glitches. Obviously, it's not very practical for in-game unless you're actually going left for some strange reason. Mind you, this game does have some vertical and uh, otherwise horizontal elements to it compared to other Sonic games. It's not just to hold right to win like some other ones are. But, yeah. Also, yeah, because there's because the, uh, you get chaos in the levels, there's actually no special stages this time around. Which, mind you, the special stages in Sonic 1 and for Game Gear were a bit of a time waster, but I wouldn't mind seeing something like that again. Either way, Aqua Lake Act 3 is, as usual, a very short act. In fact, if you're quick on jumping, you can get to the boss fight in about 20 seconds, I believe, because you just need to jump off that at the right angle, which I did not. And time for the boss, which, if I recall correctly, is the easiest boss in the game. This walrus. The way he works is that when he starts blowing that ball up, jump on him, it explodes and does damage to him. After that, you're going to want to stay around, a, uh, stay away from him a bit, then jump so he'll start bouncing you on his nose. This does no damage. He does have a tail kick up thing that he'll do if you're too close to him, though, before he starts bouncing you. And after that, just repeat ad nauseum. Burst his bubble, stay away, jump on his nose several times, burst his bubble. So on so forth. Really, yeah, thinking about it, actually, aside from maybe one other boss, the bosses after the antlion are pretty easy. I mean, sure, you do have the constant fear of death due to being a one-shot kill, but eh, the game's actually kind of fair about that. Plus, this game actually gives you a pretty high amount of extra lives for either rings or just finding them in the level, so game overs past a certain point are kind of hard to get in my eyes. Don't get me wrong though, this game still has some pretty dickish level design later on. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part two, we're heading into Green Hills Zone, not Green Hill, Green Hills, and seeing what we can do after that. See you guys then.